Today on SA News, we have Joel Smallbone, singer of King and Country. In this movie, Joel is an actor. He plays his father. He's also co-writer, co-director of the new film, Unsung Hero. Welcome to SA News. Hey, man. Thank you for having me. It's a, it's a thrill to talk to you today. From Lionsgate, in fact. Okay, stay close. Let's go. How y'all doing? Are y'all from England? Uh, Australia. Australia. Wish I had an accent. Dad, I wrote a song. Thought maybe we could ask for an audition. Oh, that's great, honey. Let's take it one step at a time. Okay, he tells me you're a promoter. You know someone looking for one. Well, I may know somebody who should be. She's been given a beautiful voice. It's a miracle. She's a special one, son. Your family, they're not in the way. They are the way. How far we've come. Look at you, man. You're making it happen. <laughs> you, my, my. How, that, that, there could not be a more, you know, apt headline than how far we've come, both geographically and vocationally. <laughs> very kind. I'm, uh, I'm very proud of you because after seeing this movie, it's like a, there's a lot of filmmakers out there. I get to, you know, I'm lucky to spend time with a lot of filmmakers, but, you know, not, not many filmmakers have the opportunity to do what Steven Spielberg did. This is what you did, what Steven Spielberg did. You know, you did a film, co, co-wrote, co-directed a film about your family. Wow, that's amazing. How was that experience? I love that you pulled Fablesman, by the way, because that was one of the kind of the reference points for this was like, you know, if it's, <laughs> if it's good enough for Steven, Maybe it's good enough for us, right? Uh, it was uh, it was profound to say the least, as one would imagine. Uh, it's my parents' story. I was very young at the time, you know, one of seven kids. Dad lost his job in Australia, or a business went bad, and chasing a dream, he and mum and six kids with one on the way moved continents from Australia to Nashville, Tennessee, Nashville, Tennessee. <laughs> and uh, and then once we arrived, he lost his job. And so we found ourselves half a world away, sleeping on beds made out of clothes, raking leaves, mowing lawns, no furniture, no car, no insurance, and uh, banding together as a family and just saw mir miracles happen. Um, really, we're united in prayer as a family that during that time. And uh, it's a real thrill to be able to, steward that story not only as a co-screenwriter and co-director with Richard Ramsey but also um to step in the shoes and literally the jacket of my father David Smallbone in playing him as part of the film that's amazing um I, I see I, I'm drawn to inspirational films so I love watching inspirational films and um as a father I'm drawn to content I can show to my family uh right. we saw this movie together right. And we all we all loved it. Um, so many of these uh, family family first films that are out there, they don't have they have an element or two. But man, this this film hits off like fireworks. It has so many different elements throughout the thing. It has such a great arc going through the whole film. There's so many elements that mm. just keep you revived and keep you energized. You want to see where this is going, and and you don't know you don't know until it's over. You know, and uh, there's something at the very, very end, we cut to credits that really, really hit me. And um, mm -hmm. can you share with me a, a, a little bit about some of those nuances that were very important for the authenticity of what you were trying to get yeah. I remember it was, uh, it was the year of our Lord 2020 and the pandemic had just struck. Uh, we were on a drive-in tour and Luke had called a producer friend, my brother Luke, who's in for King Country with me. And he said, he said to the producer, look, we've told this story as a band for years, as kind of a pay it forward child advocacy moment. Um, what do you think about developing it into a, a, a feature film? So there we were on a drive-in tour at a Hampton Inn with the producers and the screenwriter and our family and masks on and the whole nine yards. <laughs> and 
we shared the tenets of the story with Richard Ramsey, the co-screenwriter. And I remember he looked at dad and he said, I'm so sorry that you had to go through what you went through. But then he turned to the rest of the table and he said, but what a great movie this is going to make. Because all that you saw, you know, Xavier, virtually all of it w- was was real. And that's why it has such a peculiar twist and turn. Because you can't make this stuff up. Um, <laughs> you know, it. And, and so we literally took out the based on true story, inspired by true story. And we just wrote, this is a true story because it's just so close to home. And I loved that. I loved that we were able to uh, not have to fake it or, you know, fabricate it, that we could actually just tell it the way it was. In fact, the only thing we had to do is we had to actually pull out, we had to extract some of all of the miracles because uh, it started feeling sentimental. There were just too many, you know, in real life, if it, if a check shows up in the mail and covers your bills by dollars in real life, you're like, this is a miracle. If that happens on screen, you're like, this is bad script writing, you know? And so that was the only corner that we had to cut in the whole process. And can you share with me a little bit about that? Because that was actually going to be my next question. The, everything that you're seeing is real and that's a rarity in, in, in motion pictures. Um, and cutting out some of the things that really kind of show that, you were being coveted. We're all being coveted, but there's something about how how your family practices their faith. Um, and it seems like it's not just, it's a, it's a continuous thing going on to the producing this, this film. Um, yeah. How does that connect to uh, prayer life and also getting this picture done? Because there's always uh, movie magic, which turns into something oh, extraordinary when you're doing something faith-based. Yeah, yeah. Look, I the key was uh, I had to come in, we all had to come in with a very sober mind. Going, we love these humans. We are bone of their bone, flesh of their flesh. We cannot afford sentiment. We we can, we also can't afford um glorification unrealistically. And we also can't afford bias. We have to surround ourselves with people who are, can speak truth, who can call us out when we're making the wrong decision. And so there's just a, speaking of unsung heroes, there's a great team of unsung heroes in front of the camera and behind the camera that really took this story and made it their own. And that's what you're seeing on screen as well. This, this became Yes, this is our parents' story. And yes, it's my family's story. But the real heartbeat of it is, I found this as a musician, the the closer you get to your own heart with art, the further it reaches into someone else's. And so while this is a story about my family, this is a story about the family. This is a story about mothers around the world. This is a story about migration. This is a story about miracles. And so... I had to really, yes, on one hand, I had to go deep into my heart, but on the same time I had to go, this is not, like you give it away. This is what we do in music all the time. You release a song. Remember Bono from U2 said it once. He he released the song and then he said, it's not my song anymore, it's your song. And that's the way I feel with this movie, you know. Come April 26th, you know, what we're calling Family Day and when it releases in theaters around Canada and America and the world, it's not my movie anymore. It's not my story anymore. It's the world's story now. This is definitely something different. And we've come to, we've come from this lineage of these movies that are uh, inspirational or faith-based that kind of have these corny elements. This is something so different that um, I'm very proud that uh, that this is kind of, we're, we're changing the narrative here. People are seeing something that they can be feel connected to, be proud of, and something that feel like this movie is going to last generations. So um, mm-hmm. I, I think that you're there in the Lionsgate uh, jail because they want to keep you. They don't want to let you go. <laughs> right, right. Oh, well, man, I, I, I hope so. I, you know, the, the saying goes, pain is temporary, but film is forever. And it's, it's a humbling thought to think that you, you created something that will go down in some form as documentation as to what my parents walked through and their great faith. And uh, the highest compliment Xavier, because I know you see so much, is that that we accomplished the mission in making it grounded and gritty and warts and all, 
um, because I uh, there's no time to just focus on good sentiment anymore. It just has to be real, you know, right. and that's what we attempted to do. Yes, we we lack authenticity in in a world where we crave it in every ounce of our being. So, yeah, thank you for making such a great picture, and um, congratulations to you and your team. You did an amazing job. Thank you, Xavier. I I'm 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 fascinated to see what the next week holds, and I'll say to your viewers and your listeners, if you love your mom and miracles and and music and migration and the '90s and faith, and if you love your family, uh, come out to the cinemas on family day on the 26th and beyond. Uh, this, hey, this is also a fun fact too. Uh, the 26th is my parents' 49th wedding anniversary. Oh, wow. That's, right. so, That's amazing. And Great. speaking of Lionsgate, Lionsgate were the ones that uh, Adam Fogelson picked the date and I didn't even clock it at the time. I remember I remember talking to mom and 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 saying, oh, they picked the date, it's April 26th. And, and she said, oh, you know, that's our 49th wedding anniversary, right? And I lied. Xavier, I lied. I was like, yes. Yes. <laughs> That's why we did it, Mom. That's so. amazing. Well, thank you for spending a little time with us here on SA News. And uh, and congratulations again. Can't wait to see the next one. And thanks for having me. And, uh, and be blessed. There's no food. And we're almost out of money. We need to make some changes. Kids, we need your help. This is everything we have. And sometimes it's going to grow. And sometimes it will shrink but it cannot be allowed to disappear. I wonder if he's right. Maybe I'm not meant to sing. Or maybe you're not meant to sing other people's songs. It's gonna be dangerous and scary. And giving up, giving in, it's not an option. Whatever your dream is, I know you can achieve it. Please welcome my big sister. My dream is to be like you. It always has been. I want a record deal. So do I. Yeah, well, boys, get in line. <laughs>